Animal production is the technology applied to the keeping of livestock for profit making. Pig production is a lucrative economic venture that can be practiced by small or large scale income livestock farmers. The saw, which is a female pig, has short gestation period and furrows several young ones at a go, such that when properly managed, pig production can improve the economic, social and health status of farmers. Pig production involves the raising and management of pigs, mainly for meat. This aspect of livestock farming has gained a top recognition in most parts of the world, except in Arabic or Islamic countries, due to religious reasons. It is one of the lucrative agribusinesses in the West African region. It is a profitable business because the cost of production is low compared to other livestock farming business. Whenever pig farming is being discussed, what comes to most people's mind is dirty animals. With all necessary facilities in place, pigs are one of the neatest and distant animals in the world. In order to keep them healthy, the first rule of any pig farm is to maintain clean housing environment. Hygiene, very good hygiene and good sanitation. The first one is the food dip. The food dip that you came into the house, you didn't want to bring anything on your feet into the house. Then you go back to the shops they have that. You see that you have, every day they, they wash it and clean it. So you don't let urine accumulate. Two, you don't let feces accumulate. You will notice that there were very few flies inside that. And a lot of things that will generate disease causing organisms have been removed. So, hygiene, proper hygiene and sanitary, extremely important. Very, very important. But in the event that there's a problem, what do you do? There are things you use to treat. Antibiotics are for are produced for things that will cause uh, microbial diseases, so use antibiotics. The success of any pig production enterprise depends first and foremost on good nutrition, the feeding of livestock with a well-balanced diet. One of the most important ingredients or nutrients in, the, in life is water. These pigs can survive even two days without food. But they cannot survive one day without water. So to sustain them mainly, because there's a saying that pigs eat everything, but we say not everything that the pig eats is good for it. We say pigs eat almost anything, but there's a preference. Pigs have the same nutritional constitution like human beings. We feed animals so that they can sustain their life processes. They have to eat to get nutrients which they will use to maintain their life. Now, it's the nutrients they will need to grow to put on flesh, which you want. It means that if you feed them well, they will put on good muscle. They will give you good meat. So you have to feed them well. So you must understand what pigs eat. What they eat. It's very important for them to do that. You must give them a good quality maize, good quality soybean, good quality, whatever good feed. Pigs eat anything. Mm -hmm. However, you must put them in the right proportion, in the mm. right quantity, so that they will get the correct amount of nutrients. They need to grow very well. So primarily, you feed them to stay alive. But secondly, you feed them so that they will grow well. Mm. You see, one thing is to maintain life. Yeah. Another thing is for them to grow very well. And growth is what we want in them. Two, um, it's not just feeding alone. You have to look at the cost of feeding this animal. So you must feed them in a manner that you'll be able to make your money back. So you must 
the economics of feeding become important. Which one is cheaper to feed, maize or sorghum? Right now, guinea corn is cheaper than maize. So you change to guinea corn. Right now, soybean is getting cheaper than granite. So which one do you want? So all that goes into consideration in their nutrition. The nutritional needs of pig in the various phases of their life cycle vary. Hence, to achieve the maximum benefits of fast growth and efficient bread conversation, there is need to meet the feeding requirements of the pig at their various stages. One of the big advantages of farming pigs is their ability to reproduce. Sows can produce over 2 liters per year with an excess of 20 piglets weaned. This is a very high reproductive rate compared to cattle and sheep. Livestock farmers generally appreciate the time and input cost required to grow animals from birth to market weight. What is sometimes overlooked is the substantial expenses involved with maintaining the mature breeding animals which is necessary for subsequent reproduction. So the pig stays and gets stays for three months, two weeks here on the farm. When for a pig to deliver, we call it farrow. So when it is time for it to farrow, we bring her down to this. What you can see, this structure is a farrowing crate in a farrowing pen. Understand? We call this place now a maternity. The aim of having this thing is that you see this thing here. It is like a critical space. See this space you see here. It is the saving space because it has been discovered that most of the deaths or mortality that happens for these piglets is caused by the mother lying on the piglets. You know when these piglets are farrowed, they used to feel cold. They feel cold because they don't have enough uh, protection or in terms of uh, they have not laid down any fat to help them to cover the, the weather. So they chill. And when they chill, they stay, if they stay on the, between the solid wall and the mother, the mother presses them against the wall and they feel warm. So she presses more and they feel warmer. And if you allow her to press more than that, they will come back like this uh, bread that they have, uh, you know, uh, they will die. So, and that is how many of them used to happen. So, to avoid that, we put the mother here one week and three days before the period of uh, delivery. So when she delivers and she wants to crush these children, they escape through this door. The inefficient management of guilt contributes to the 30% or more of the non-productive days of many herds. Therefore, it is important to ensure that guilt reach puberty oxtrus at the earliest possible age and weight. Good, efficient housing makes management easier and helps the farmers to successfully rear 85% or more of all the bone piglets to market with in the shortest possible time. Pigs at different stages of growth need different environments if they are to produce and grow at their maximum potential. Animals have to be properly housed because you can build a concrete house. What are the essentials of a good, of a good, uh, a good house? The house should be strong because the pig is a very hardy animal. It's a very tough animal. You put them in the mud house, they will knock it down. So you must build a strong house. If it's made of wood, nail it with thick wood, hard wood, or use wire mesh, and then you fence them around. Make sure the floor is very hard because they root, they dig. They really dig. So you must have a strong floor. That's why if you lose pigs on the farm or around the houses, they dig the foundation of houses. They can go to your farm and dig up your yams, dig up your cassava, dig up your potatoes. So because they root, you don't want them. So a good house is one that is strong, that will allow ventilation, allow air to pass through. So that the gas, you know, when the urine, you know, if you go to a urinal, smell ammonia, 
Yes. You go to a bathroom that is not flushing, you smell strong ammonia. The same thing with that. So you let air pass through so that this thing move. So a good house is strong, it is firm, and it allows the animals to stay very well. Of course, it's a good house is also one that allows you to move in and out of the place. You, the farmer, if you have to jump in and jump out, you won't like it. Mm -hmm. So a good house is one that allows easy operations. So you have to have a good house. And then you have to give it enough space. Now for most pigs, for most pigs, all you need to give them, a good house for them is about six feet by six feet. But when it's for reproduction, it can be higher. Eight feet by ten feet, so that they can move around, they can exercise. You saw the essences of uh, the farrowing crate, the guard rails, and so on and so forth. Growing and reproducing pigs must be protected against high temperatures. The houses must therefore be built in such a way that the pigs are protected against extreme temperatures and other bad weather conditions such as cold winds and continuous rain. Diseases in pig production is generally caused by multiple factors. Microbial pathogens are rarely the sole cause of health problem on a pig farm. Clinical diseases are usually the interaction of pathogens with errors of management and a variety of contributing factors such as environment and host. Many pathogens are endemic in the swine population and yet some farms suffer heavy losses from diseases whereas the impact on other farms is much less because of management differences. Health is a deviation from normal body function. Fever, high fever means the body is reacting to an invasion. Something has entered this body. So it is generating a lot of heat. You see it as fever. The animal becomes sleepy. It's a sign of disease. The animal is not eating. It's a sign of ill health. It's generating instead of the urine being pale yellow. It's deep, deep golden yellow, reddish, bloodish. It's a sign of this. So, most importantly, you as a farmer, you should be able to understand the signs of disease or discomfort. Animals that stay away from the other animals, that's a problem. Animals that stop eating, that's a problem. Animals that you think it is pregnant, it is not pregnant, that's a problem. So you as the farmer should be able to recognize these symptoms, these manifestations that allow you to say your animals are in a state of discomfort or ill health. Now diseases or ill conditions can be precipitated by many things. Most of them are living things, but there are some that are non-living things. If you have a deficiency of calcium, phosphorus, maybe minerals, the bones become weak. You have tail legs, you have bow legs, all right? Uh, if there is no, not enough iron in the blood, they become anemic. The animals become pale. So they need to have a lot of iron because iron is a very, very important part of our blood. The animal blood. That's why it's hemoglobin. Heme, that's a portion of it that contains an iron molecule. That's what gives it that reddish color. So, most importantly, in understanding health, to recognize the signs of ill health. And signs of ill health is because the animal is no longer eating, no longer urinating. The feces are watery, and sometimes they are very hard, when the feces should be moist and soft. Not watery, and not too hard. Okay? Mm -hmm. So... All these things are manifested. So when you come to your farm and you look at your animals, you'll be able to judge if there's a problem. Okay. Now, you're looking for what? Signs of your health. Treatment can involve use of antibiotics if it is a bacterial infection. All right? There are bacterial diseases that affect them, like bacterial dysentery, uh, which is also bacterial scars. So, 
so you can treat with antibiotics. You also have worms. You can use the wormers like piperazine. Uh, you can buy from any veterinary store piperazine, which you can use to treat against worms. There is Wormex. There are so many of them. There are many preparations. Uh, the most important, one of the most important critical problems for or pigs is the problem of worms, especially the ones that are running around the villages. They pick worms here. They eat a lot of feces. And so they can pass the eggs and so on and so forth. So, you see, essentially, once you know why do you feed animals, why do you reproduce animals, why do you care for the health of animals, why do you give pigs good housing, then, if you understand this, you are a good manager. Health management, therefore, plays a key role in a successful and profitable pig farming enterprise.